Hello, my name is Penny G and I like to fly tricopters. As is the nature of tricopters when you fly hard and crash hard, you're going to break a lot of tail servos. Uh, recently bought myself a David Vinder style mini tri, love it. Uh, and of course the tail servo David recommends, uh, BMS 210 DMH. Fantastic servo, takes a hell of a beating, but uh, after a little run in with a tree I had last week, this one needs just a few repairs. So hopefully I'm going to show you how, to, how you can fix this without having to get another gear set and be able to get yourself back in the air. Now this particular servo has had a real beating. I've actually uh, burnt through the wires when the tail uh, arm of my tricopter, uh, let's just say it shot up through the body of the tricopter and leaving a wave of destruction. Um, so I'm going to change the t uh, cable and I'm also going to try and repair the gear set on the um, final output shaft here. Um, that's most often the one that gets stripped and if you can actually turn it around 180 degrees to the other side, if there's nothing stopping you doing that, that's fine. But on, on this servo, uh, you can't do that uh, without a, mo a small modification and I'll show you why as we move along. Now before you repair this particular servo, you're going to need a number 5 Torx driver. Um, I've got a set of these here, so look for a, a, a set there with a T5, very tiny little Torx driver. This is these are not Allen screws and they're not little Phillips either. So I'll just take these out and I think we'll probably fast forward through this bit. Okay, so once you've got the four screws out, just going to move those up out of the road. Okay should at this point be able to ease the top of the case off just by gripping the body and the black plastic top and just wiggling it back and forth. There you go, mine's popped off and you can see as I pulled it apart one of the gears has fallen out. Grab that. Now you can see inside the servo you have a whole bunch of gears, a whole gear set. Ah, oh, there we go. And there's the output shaft in it stayed in the top there for that final gear. This gear here just pops in there with the shaft straight through it and that drives the final output. Now if we, this shaft here will actually just pop straight out it's, with a bit of effort, it's actually fairly well retained, the bearing comes off like so and you can just a bit of effort pull that out. Okay, I'll just put that down there. Okay, now you should be able to see there I'll just bring this in for a close look, see if I can get the camera to focus. Okay, you can see there that there's a, some of the gears are really quite badly munted. Okay, so on this side here there's quite a lot of chewed teeth just around that top section there. But if we t turn it around the other side, these teeth are absolutely pristine on the other side. Now a servo should only move through about 90, maybe 100 degrees of travel, the normal servo. So if we could just get the servo to use the teeth on the other side, then we should be able to get this thing back together. If we have a look at the, the other gears involved, so this is the gear that actually drives the other one. You can see it's got a little bit of damage, but it's got, its teeth are actually still pretty well intact. These ones tend to survive because this gear is actually made of steel, not made of um, aluminium. Okay, so you can see there's a couple there. We might have to clean that up. That actually looks like there's aluminium stuck in the gears there. Let's see if we can pop that. Yeah, there we go. So that'll that'll clean out and those teeth are actually in good nick. So the only thing that's actually damaged here is this final output gear. Okay. Now the problem is, if you look at the bottom of this shaft here, let's see if I can get it to focus again, you can see that it's got a flat on one side. And that flat goes into the servo itself and you can see that there's a keyed hole that, that goes into. That'll only go in one way, which means that we can't just turn this round 180 degrees. It's actually preset according to that sensor down there, the, the magnetic induction I think it is, sensor, um, as to how it can go in. But what I'm going to do, I want to turn this around 180 degrees, so I'm going to have to go and very carefully get a file and where I've got a flat on this side I'm going to try and make a flat on the other side 
so I can put this gear in the other way. Now you can see here I've just finished with the file uh, and you can see here that instead of having a D shape on the end well it's kind of like a flattened out oval but you can see that there's there's the original flat there on the one side and I've just carefully you notice the angle's not perfect doesn't have to be you really want to just get a good degree around the other side but you can see that I've just carefully filed out a flat there haven't used anything special literally just got a fairly fine file that I had and I just very carefully just very slowly worked away the edge of it this this whole thing's aluminium so that there's uh, plenty of uh, it's fairly soft it's fairly easy to file so even just a light points file or something like that will do the job eventually okay now what we're going to do when I reassemble this is I'm going to put this in 180 degrees roughly from the position it was so it fits in that hole the other way around um, now I've also noticed as part of this this output shaft is slightly bent I'm just going to fix that up and then uh, I'll bend that slowly and put that back in now there's another thing I noticed as well I have cleaned that gear up that's all okay but I also noticed something that's worth checking this little shaft here which goes through the second last output gear so it goes in that hole there and the gear sits on that I had a look at this and I just noticed that it was just slightly bent it's very hard to see on camera but when I put this in one way it um, doesn't want to go in on the hole on the top so just be very careful just check those uh, shafts and if they're a little bit bent just carefully use a pair of pliers and bend them back they're hardened steel so they should be able to handle the jaws or something like pliers like this okay so the next step is to start reassembling uh, let me just straighten the shaft and we'll get into that next okay I've now got the shaft fairly straight here or the final output shaft um, and I also managed to straighten the tiny little shaft that goes through the well, second last output gear. Now this, the way that I could tell that there was actually a bend in the shaft, it was very very slight, it was by trying to push the shaft the whole way through the gear. So I'd start at one side like that and I'd try and push it through and as it came through at the other end it would bind because the shaft was bent and the, the tolerance on this hole in the gear is quite small. So it's an easy way to detect if that last shaft is bent. If you can push it all the way through and all the way back and there's no binding, no sticking, then you're probably okay. You don't need to do that step. But uh, I did in this case, it was quite bent. Uh, wouldn't go through from one side. Now, just when we reinsert this, just gotta be careful, gotta look, work out which is, that's the original side, that's the side that I've filed. So I have to make sure that one, one good tip I can give you is when you work out which side is the one that is the one that you just fixed use your magic marker put a little bit of black on it so it's very obvious which one side should be engaging in the flat of the D inside on the sensor okay so to insert this you can see inside I can see which way the D is the D right now the flat is pointing towards that shiny gear on the top you don't need to put in the second last gear you put in this one first line it up I've got the black side there and that should just you'll you'll feel it engage with the uh, sensor first it should just slide in and then you should feel it slide down fairly smoothly no nope, that's not engaged with the sensor and in fact I've just pushed the sensor through crap oh dear that's not good Okay, see if I can push that back. Is this? Oh, I'm gonna have to pull this thing apart to see what the go is on the other side. What have I done now? Board should come out. Oh yes. Okay, if you push the sensor through, it's not too much trouble. You can. It's only really just, as you can see, held in. Well, very loosely, really. So interesting looking thing. Now, let me just straighten that up again so that the D is flat and the D is back this way. In fact, we could even just test to make sure, just do a test fit. Will that go in? Have we filed off enough? And the answer is no, because that won't go in that way. Okay, it'll go in the other way, just, but it really doesn't. Okay, so we've got a bit more work there to do. 
with the file. This is a moral of the story always test fit. Okay, so you can see I've just finished filing a little bit more off there. Just do another test fit. Okay, that's beautiful now. That goes in. I'll even pull that out. Now I'll just give it a couple more runs through just to make sure. Beautiful. Okay, it's still a good tight fit. Should be a tight fit, shouldn't be loose. That would be bad. Okay, now we're gonna to have to pull the bottom half out anyway, so because I've got to change this servo cable over, so I'll just start doing that. I'll just do that off camera, I'll come back. Okay, so just resoldered on the new cable so it's not the burnt one. Let's cut through and burnt. And I've got that lined up, so I'll pop that back in the bottom again. Now that should just pop straight through, just wiggle that in place, make sure it pops all the way up, and where does that go, that goes, okay, but make sure the relief goes right in, and it sits underneath that metal case, don't make that mistake, like I did, okay, that doesn't seem to want to go up, hmm, Maybe I can use that screw. Okay, that allows me to align it. Let's see how far up we can go. Oh, I see. Doesn't go the whole way because that can just covers the bottom. Okay, so that's it. That's cool. Now, that should just cover over. Oh, it looks like I need to cut those down a bit. If you do have to replace the cable on this, be very careful because there's just a tiny little surface mount resistor or cap just there. It's very easy to desolder when you're redoing those leads. So, not a soldering job for the faint hearted. Alright, so we'll just pop that cap back on. Hopefully, that should just. Oh, knock the gears off, that's okay. Should be able to just wiggle that back into place. Make sure that rubber thing seats properly. How are we looking? Pretty good. Alright, this has been the tricky one, so let's try this first. I'll just wiggle that down into place until it gets in the right spot. Keep on wiggling. Here it goes. It's not quite seated in the bearing yet. It's there, but it's not quite there. There we go. And I think that's still in the sensor. Hope that's still in the sensor. All right, now, where those gears are should be 180 degrees from the bottom piece, so that should be fine. All right. Changing gears on servos is always a fairly fun job. This is the first drive off the motor. Goes through there. Yep, you can see a tiny little pin gears to spinning there. It's good, it's engaged. As you add each gear, you should be able to spin it and then feel that little pinion and that motor drive in. And then the last gear, which goes in here, the easy way to do this one is pop the shaft up, slide it into place, and then Drop that shaft down into the hole, like so. Beautiful. Now, I'm just going to mark on the top where the flat is. That's where the crap bit is. And hopefully, I should be able to just pop this bearing over the top. It'll slide down pretty easily. 
I'm going to just try and get the top on. Without these gears jumping out or having a fit. Yeah, okay, that is actually, they're moving. So that's the main thing. Okay, if you want to add some grease, this is probably about the time to do it. I'm just going to make sure that this thing works and then I'll probably pop the cap off and put a little bit of grease on. Do that before I do a final tighten. But if you get everything lined up, that top should pretty much just squeeze on. Shouldn't be a difficult thing to do. Okay, there'll be a little bit of pressure there, which is okay. Now, at this point, we should be able to get a servo arm, put that on there and see if we can get this to move at all. Okay, so here's one I forgot to prepare earlier. Okay, and I was able to, oh there we go. Okay, that actually feels quite smooth. Now there's no other notchiness. This, the, play, the play has all gone from this servo. So that actually looks like that is a good repair. Excellent. Let's we'll pull that arm off and see if we can fire that up on a servo tester and see where we're at. See if we've got the smooth stuff or not. Okay, let's see if the magic smoke comes out, shall we? See if I've got this right, wrong, or indifferent. Okay, now you can see there that the mark there is away from where the other little gear is inside. And the movement of that servo quite smooth throughout its entire range. Okay, and the shaft itself, does it look bent? No. Nope. Looks fine to me. Brilliant! I think that's a very successful repair. Okay, so there you go. Even with a server that's not designed to be repaired, because it's got a little D-shaped one-way key on the output shaft with a bit of care and attention, you can repair these too.